In this presentation, we will take a look at the closing process for a corporation. We're going to enter the journal entries on the left side. We will post that not to the general ledger, but to a worksheet in the center column. Our worksheet down here being a trial balance, which has a beginning trial balance, where we will enter our adjustments and then see very quickly and easily what the effect will be on the assets, liabilities, equity, income, and expense. And those assets, liability, equity, income, and expense are listed here, color coordinated, assets in green, liabilities in orange, the equity section, light blue, and the income statement, revenue and expenses, dark blue. We have the debits represented by positive or non-bracketed numbers, credits represented by brackets or uh, negative numbers. The debits minus the credits will be zero, indicated here, which is an indication that the debits do indeed equal the credits. We have our net income at 425,000, representing the credits of revenue minus the debits of expenses to give us that 425,000. So what we're gonna do here is the closing process. The closing process is much the same for a corporation or any type of ent entity, whether it be a sole proprietorship, partnership, or a corporation. We're gonna choose just a, a small income statement because our goal here isn't really to uh, go through all the different expense accounts to close them out. They'll all be similar in nature, uh, meaning all expense accounts have debits and all revenue accounts have credits. And so we're just gonna have one account basically representing all expenses. The thing that will differ from a corporation to uh, other types of entities is where we close this process to. So this will give us a reminder of the first three steps of the closing process. Uh, which is to close out revenue to the income summary, then close out expenses to the income summary, then close out the income summary where net income will be, to the new thing, which is retained earnings. Because this is really the new account, retained earnings, is different from a sole proprietorship or partnership, in which case we have capital accounts for the owner or owners, in the case of a, of a sole proprietorship or partnership, respectively. So we're going to close it out to um, retained earnings, the other difference will be that uh, we don't have draws. We have this account called dividends that we'll close out. So really, when we look at the closing process, we are typically only looking at these accounts. And this can be a little bit confusing because if we're looking at a partnership or, or a um, sole proprietor, uh, we have capital accounts and we're closing part of the revenue out to all, we're closing all the revenue out to the capital accounts in some way, either the one owner or the multiple owners. And so we might, you get the idea of up here and saying, well, why is it going to retained earnings? And we're leaving the whole other half of the equity section untouched. And that's because, remember, because we're a corporation, we don't have to break things out by who owns the company. We break it out by stocks and they're all the same. What we'll do instead is break it out by the investment portion, which is this, and then the portion that is the earnings that have accumulated over time and have not yet been distributed, which is this side down here. So what we're working with here is net income, what has been earned. It's not gonna go into the investment half up here. It's just gonna go into the uh, retained earnings. Now this process can be compared to the statement of retained earnings, which is like the statement of owner's equity, statement of equity type of uh, transaction. And we're, where we have the beginning retained earnings, which is gonna be from here. We're going to close out net income to it, in essence, adding net income to it because retain, you know, the retained earnings is going to go up by net income, in other words. That's the 425, and then it's going to be decreased by the dividends, which will be the dividends from here. That's going to give us the 478. So that's, in essence, well, that is what we'll be left with when we finish the closing process. So we'll get this to that same 478. All temporary accounts will be removed, including this and these two income statement accounts. Okay, so let's do that. Uh, first step of the four-step closing process is to close out revenue to the income summary. The income summary is our clearing account. Remember, it's going to be zero before we start. It'll be zero when we're done. So the revenue account has a credit balance. We're going to do the opposite thing to it in order to make it go down. Our objective is to make this zero, this zero, this zero and then being balanced by putting the difference here at the end of the day. But we'll do that with a four-step process. So I'm gonna copy this, or copy revenue. Right-click and copy. We'll put that up top. It's gonna to be a debit, so we'll put it in A2. Right-click and paste, one, two, three. 
the amount's gonna be this 500,000. That's the debit, 500,000. We're gonna credit something for the same amount. I'm just gonna do that with a negative of this number. So that's, you could just type in a negative 5,000 will work as well, 500,000 will work as well. Now that's gonna go to our clearing account. This is where we're gonna hold it. Why are we putting it here not to retain earnings? Because we wanna to go to the clearing account to stick with this four step process and get net income in the clearing account and give us a kind of a check before we finish the closing process, closing it out to retained earnings. So we'll copy the income summary. So by the way, that's just why you've probably, we don't see income summary on the trial balance most of the time because it's only there when we start the closing process. Okay, so we're gonna go back up. We're gonna put this in uh, A3, right click and paste, one, two, three. There's our first transaction. We'll post this to our middle column. So we've got the revenue. It's gonna be down here. It's in the revenue section. We're gonna be in the middle column. I'm in column, I'm in cell G19. Within G19, we will say equals. Scroll up just a bit and point to that 500,000 and enter. So then we bring this down to zero as we want. We're out of balance, of course, by the 500,000 until we record the other side, the other side being the income summary. Income summary is gonna be posted here to the income summary account in the middle column in G18. We will do that by saying equals, scrolling up just a bit and going to that income summary uh, credit and enter. So now we've, re we've done our objective, which is to make this zero. And we've temporarily put that into the income summary where we will ultimately put it is retained earnings. But this will be our holding account until we close out all revenue, all expenses, leaving us with net income for 25,000 there after we're done with that, that we will then close out to retained earnings after we've checked that all temporary accounts for the income statement are zero. Next, we're gonna close out the expenses. Now, there's only one here, but really we're just saying that all expenses are, we kind of grouped into one account just so we can simplify this process. If we had a whole lot of expenses, like many companies will, <laughs> they will all be debit balances. So the, the process will be the same. And uh, we've seen the process in prior courses. So we're gonna go through here and, uh, and just do this in one kind of lump sum for all expenses and uh, show how that will work. Here's the debit. We're gonna do the opposite thing to it, which is a credit. So I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna uh, copy the expense, right click and copy. I'm gonna skip a line because it's a new journal entry. I'm gonna skip another line because it's gonna go on the bottom and we are down here in A6. Right click and paste, one, two, three. We're gonna go into the credit side now. It's gonna be for that 75,000. I'm gonna put a negative for credit, 75,000. Then we're gonna have a debit, we'll put that on top as it traditionally is done. And we're in B5 where we will say negative of this number. We could just type in 75,000. I think the formula is fun or good or useful to do when applicable. So then we're gonna go down and we're gonna put that to our temporary, our holding account, our income summary account. So we're gonna copy the income summary account in E18, right click and copy. Scroll back up, we're gonna put that in A5, right click and paste, one, two, three. Then we'll post this out to our center column, starting with the income summary as the debit. Scrolling down just a bit, here's the income summary. We wanna be in that middle column, there's something in G18, so we're gonna double click on it, go to the end of it, say plus, and then scroll back up to that debit in B5 and enter. So what we have in there is what's in, we, these two income summaries are netting out and we're left with the 425. 425 should look familiar because that is now net income. Net income has now been moved over here. So we're gonna post the other side now to expenses. We're gonna post the credit to expenses. There it is on the journal entry. Here it is on the trial balance. We wanna be in the center column in G20 where we will say equals, scroll back up, Point to those expenses, 75,000 and enter. And there we have it. So now the whole income statement, which we've kind of grouped together, it's just one revenue and one expense account, is now zero. That being the goal, or one of the goals of the closing process, because these are temporary accounts, we want them to start at zero, just like a stopwatch is reset to go forward in the next time period. 
The net income then is now in the income summary, which is our holding account, our temporary account, our account, which is kind of a check figure to see one, that we have the net income as it should be, as it should be reported on the uh, income statement that we had prepared for this. And we see that all temporary accounts related to the income statement are zero. If that is indeed the case, then we can go that look, looks good, checks out. Therefore, we're gonna do the next process, the step three of the four step process, which is to close out the income summary, now having net income in it, to retained earnings. So, and that's of course is the new step, just because the name is different. That's the only thing that's different from a sole proprietorship partnership. We would close it out to a capital account or some capital accounts. If it were a sole proprietorship or partnership, we are closing it now to retained earnings, which, you know, at the def definition of the name you can see, and there's basically the earnings <laughs> that have been generated over the lifetime of the company that have been retained. In other words, have not yet been distributed to the owners in the form of dividends. So we are going to increase this then, uh, or we're going, to, we're going to take it out of income summary and put it into the uh, retainer. And so here's a credit. And it's useful to actually post these because then you'll see that there's an income summary account has a credit in it. And, and we need to go to zero. So we're going to do the opposite thing to it, which is a debit. So we're going to go to uh, E18, right click and copy. Scroll back up. We're going to skip a line, put it on a new journal entry in A8 and right click and paste. One, two, three. The amount will be for that 425,000. Now be careful if you're using formulas, it's tempting, just to show you, it's tempting to say equals uh, negative possibly of this number or this number. And that'll work for now, but I'll show you just to, I'll keep it for now. It'll have a circle reference when we post it. So you wanna, you wanna use uh, formulas like this whenever possible. But if you see a circle reference, I'll show you what will happen just to be aware of that's kind of one of the most common problems that can be a little confusing, especially if the circle reference is, is a few cells deep. If our worksheets get a little bit more complicated, it's kind of hard to see those. So we'll, I'll check that out for a second. We're going to put a negative of this number. We're going to have a credit going somewhere. This is the income summary. It's going to close out to retained earnings. So we're going to copy retained earnings. Put that in B9, right click and paste one, two, three. Now we're gonna post this out starting with the income summary. Here it is on the journal entry. Here it is on the trial balance. We're gonna be in the middle column. We're gonna to go to the center column, double click. Go to the end of it and plus. Now again, we're gonna have a problem here because it's gonna be a circle reference. So we're just gonna show you what'll happen because remember we drew this cell from over here. So I'm gonna say plus this number and enter. And it says there is more there there are one or more circle references for a formula refers uh, to its own cell rather than directly or indirectly this might cause them calculate incorrectly okay so you know you can see the the logic here for excel is going i can't do that why because you told me to take that number to make this number and then you told me to make this number and change that number with this number but I'm, this number is derived from the same cell that you told me to change that cell with and so it's a circle reference so here it's it's pretty obvious that it is like if you see that a few times you can say hum that's pretty obvious if we have a if we have a lot of formulas that are connecting each other the circle reference can actually be a little bit more difficult to find so what do we have to do there well we have to hard code this number we can't use this reference I can't put it in there as negative g18 I can put it in there as 425,000 that's hard coding it and enter and now we're okay so now this is drawing all those three cells no problem no circle reference does what we expect it to do bring the income summary down to zero now we're going to post the other income summary second part of this journal entry here to the income summary account we are in cell g17 where we will say equals and point to the retained earnings this is a credit, that's a credit, two credits, bringing the credit balance up in the credit direction from 317,000 by 425,000 to 742,000. So this, and it makes sense that that would go up because this represents part of what is owed back to the owners. Part of what the, and that part being what the company has earned over the life of the business, but yet not has yet distributed. Unlike this part, which represents the investment that has gone in from the owners, which is owed back to the owners as well. 
but this is what has been accumulated over and above that. Now we're going to do the last step, which is to close out the dividends to retained earning. Now note, you may not have dividends broken out on the trial balance. They may have just put them to the retained earnings whenever the dividend was done. Uh, but uh, And if that's the case, then we'd have to go into retained earnings and just check what the beginning retained earnings is and if there's any activity, meaning we'd go into the general ledger in order to check that information to do something like the statement of retained earnings. But I'm going to break it out here so that we can see it and so that it can mirror the four-step process and so that we can compare what is the dividends as compared to what happens on the sole proprietor or a partnership. And that means and dividends are, are most similar to draws. So in a sole proprietor, uh, the owner tries to do the same thing. They're going to earn revenue. And then of that revenue that has been accumulated, it'll be posted to the capital account rather than to retained earnings, just one account representing everything, investment and revenue for a sole proprietor. And then the sole proprietor has the ability to pull out whatever they want. And, the, and we call that draws, typically, pretty much, pretty much whatever they want, as long as they don't, as long as they have the money <laughs> and, their, and their account here, capital account, hopefully doesn't go to negative, then they can pull out pretty much whatever they want. They have a lot of discretion to do so. On the corporate side, we do not. The corporation stockholders uh, are entitled to dividends, but because those dividends have to be given to all shareholders in an equal proportion, then that limits any individual shareholders' ability to make draws. So dividends, the big difference is that it's still just a distribution from the corporation to the stockholders, but the stockholders individually do not have as much leeway to determine what those dividends will be. And when the dividends are determined, it's in a collective fashion. We can't give some owners dividends and others non-dividends. So uh, you can think of it as the same way from the four-step process, though. And that's just going to be that dividends represents the stuff that was paid to the owners. So therefore, uh, it's going to decrease the amount that is owed to the owners, just like draws would. So this represents, this retained earnings represents part of what is owed to the owners. We paid out 264000 Therefore, we're going to close this out here, and it'll bring down this amount. So in other words, dividends is on the books here. We need to make it go down. We're going to do the opposite thing to it in order to do that, which in this case is a credit. So in E16, we're going to right click and copy. Scroll up top. I'm going to skip a line. Skip another line so the credit will be on the bottom. I'm in cell A12. Right click and paste. One, two, three. We're then going to put the amount, which will be a credit. I'm going to put negative 264,000. Then we're going to put a debit in B11. I'm going to do that with a negative of this number. And then that's going to go to retained earnings. So here's retained earnings. I'm going to copy retained earnings, right click and copy. We'll put that up top in A11, right click and paste, one, two, three. So there we have it. Here's retained earnings on the, on the uh, journal entry. Here it is on the trial balance. Uh, we're going to be in cell G17. Something's in it. So we'll double click on it. Go to the end of it, plus, and point to that 264,000, and enter. So that brings the net income back down, or the retained earnings back down. And then we're going to go to dividends. So here's the dividends on the on the journal entry. Here it is on the trial balance. We want to be here in G set G16, where we will say equals, and point to the 264,000, bringing this 264 down by 264 to zero. So now we've achieved our objective. We have all zeros on the income statement. The income statement, I mean the income summary account, the clearing account, goes back to zero. Dividends, the other temporary account, is at zero. And the retained earnings now represents all of these numbers. If we combine those together, 478,000 credit, 478,000. That also matching what's on the statement of retained earnings here. And then we again might say, well, hmm, what happened to these two numbers? Those aren't affected because that's part of the investment. That's what was invested. That's not where we're accounting for the accumulation. So these two numbers represent the distribution of stock, uh, not the accumulation of earnings over and above that initial or that capital investment.